You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. Uh, with us, we have Dr. Jose McGathan, and she's here to talk about your options. And she says that nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. Dr. McGathan, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure being here, Randy. Thank you. So for people that don't know your practice, uh, and I have lots of questions about dental implants, by the way, but who's your typical patient and what are the different services you offer? Um, I'm a general dentist and um, I provide all kinds of services in dentistry, fillings, crowns, root canals, cleanings. Um, a lot of my patients are very nervous, so um, my clinic is a non-hospital dental facility, which means it's a dental surgical facility, which means we provide general anesthesia and all forms of sedation for nervous patients. So a lot of patients come to me for um, because they have multiple dental problems, maybe um, some toothaches or they haven't been to the dentist for a long time. And then also I have patients who are uh, wearing dentures that may want to have an alternative to wearing dentures. Now at the top of the program, uh, we said that, you know, I said that you said that nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. You believe that? Well, Randy, there are a lot of denture wearers out there, and there's a lot of happy denture wearers, but there are, are a lot of unhappy denture wearers, and they might be using adhesives in their denture. So when people come to see me where they have problems with their dentures, and they're loose, and they're getting food caught underneath there, um, they're having difficulty with speech, maybe falling out, those are the kind of things that the reason why they would put adhesive in there. Um, I talk to the patient about the reasons that they might have a loose fitting denture. And, and what's happening? Over time with a denture is you lose bone. Dentures, when dentures are first placed, they're placed and conform to the bone. But over time, you get compression on the bone and that compression actually makes you lose the bone. So over time, we let, get less and less bone so that denture has less to hold on to. And then you have to start wearing adhesives. And every several uh, years, as you lose bone, you need to get your denture relined. And during that process, that denture becomes thicker and thicker. And the bone becomes less and less and thinner. So there's less for the denture to hold on to. So when this happens, a lot of patients have to put adhesive in there. So even more adhesive. More adhesive in there to, to hold it in. And it becomes um, more difficult to wear and there's greater risk of it falling out um, or food getting in there or affecting your speech. So the answer is what? If the patient is happy with their denture, then we can talk about um, placing dental implants and fixing their denture um, into their mouth. Okay. And then if they're uh, happy with their denture but they just want to have more resistance, then we can place dental implants in that act more like holding the denture in. So basically we start from the beginning and find out what the patient's expectations or what their needs are. If the patient is happy with the denture and they want to get rid of the denture and get into fixed teeth, then we have to talk about dental implants and how are we going to do that. Okay. And during that process, we need to assess the patient. So we look at the patient's face, we look at the extra oral patient, the, the how the, the face is balanced, and then we look in the mouth and see what we have in the mouth, how their smile is, how they smile with the denture, how they smile without the denture, so we can see where everything is in place. And then we go into a radiology exam. We have a look at there, and we see where the bone is. Okay. We see how much bone they have. And what happens over time, when you've been wearing a denture for a very long time, what happens is you lose bone, because the denture is pounding on the, on the, uh, the bone, and you resorb bone after time. At the same time, the sinuses, which is the spaces in here from our nose, starts to come down. And so what happens is a lot of times denture wearers have bone in this area, this area, and they have no bone in the back. So it can be difficult to place implants. But there's two types of implants, systems that we can go through. Okay. We can go through implants that are um, where we do grafting, and we place straight implants. And there's also implants where we play tilted implants. Sometimes uh, we don't want to go into grafting. Sometimes we have no choice and we can't graft. So then we have to put tipped implants. So we tip the implants to find the bone, and that can be forward or back. So if somebody's wearing a denture, yeah. you could put like four 
five or six implants mm -hmm. on the lower yep. and snap a full arch of teeth in. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. That can either snap in or snap out or they're fixed. That means they don't come in and out? So there's, there's about three options. If the patient would really like to have teeth and it bolted in or permanently in, okay. then we would place, take the denture and convert it into what's called a fixed bridge. Sometimes patients feel good about wearing their denture, but they need to have more retention. So right. we can place implants in there. We have little snaps on them. We place snaps on them and we snap it in. The thing about those dentures are they're still on the tissue. It's still tissue supported, but it's retained by these little snaps. So you're snapping in, snapping out, but it's still on the, bone, on the tissue in the back. Because of that, you will lose bone in the back over time. So if the option is to not have a removable denture, which is that still removable. That's a full arch of teeth that don't come in and out. Yes, is if they right? want a okay. full arch of teeth and don't want it to be removed, then we go to what's called a fixed bridge. They like the look of the denture, they like the way the teeth are set up, they like the way the shape of the teeth are, the color, they like that, but they just don't want to be in a denture anymore. All right. Then we can use that denture as a replica for the final. So we take that and use that as their healing denture, okay? Because when we do this treatment, it goes in phases. We come in, the second phase would be the surgery, where we would place the dental implants in. When we place those dental implants in, there's certain criteria we have to have at that time. Because the dental implant has to be stable if we're gonna put, right. if we're gonna bolt another denture in. So, and usually this can happen because we've got systems to evaluate in the beginning how the bone is, the width, the height, and all that. So when we place the implant in, there's certain stability, mechanical stability from rotation, we call that torque, and there's certain stability from lateral movement, and we call that ISQ. So when we place the implants in, if we've got good stability, then we know we can go ahead and bolt the implant in. At that phase, during that appointment, if we've got good stability, I have a, a team of great lab technicians that come in and we take their denture and we trim away all that acrylic and we bolt it in and that is their healing denture. And they wear that healing denture. So it's for, like fixed in their it's mouth? It's fixed in their mouth. Like screwed in their mouth that it doesn't come in yeah. and out? Okay. We screw, them, we, we screw them in with small screws into the implants, fix it in there, and they are wearing that now for six for six months. Okay. Okay. So and they can healing. eat the whole time. They can eat, but they have to eat soft foods. All right. It's all right. healing, so we need to well, be gentle. Well, the kind of foods that they were eating with yeah, their denture. Kind of with exactly. So it's they're the eating like what they of, were. The same kind of so eating. So nothing as changes before. for them. No, but they will be able to advance into more um, chewy foods. Chewy foods. Yeah, chewy foods like things like um, uh, hard like carrots and healthy foods. So they're not left without teeth. Okay, they're not so, left without so teeth. So the implants are going mm -hmm. inside of the bone, the mouth, right? I just want to make sure I'm getting this yes. correct. And then the bone slowly over time grabs onto those implants. Yes. And then through whatever diagnostic testing you do, yes, yes. then you they come back in for what? The permanent set of teeth? We have to wait the six month period for that immature bone to mature. So we've got bone right away. If the patient's implants are solid in bone, mature solid bone. We do our little testing again, and if everything is great and they are happy with the look of their temporary teeth, then we make the permanent, which is, which is uh, made of zirconia, which is an amazing element, very hard, very beautiful, zirconia with porcelain, or... So this is a full arch of teeth? Full arch of teeth, yes. That are secured by implants? That's, that's and right. And they can eat and chew, whatever, At this corn on the point, cob? Oh, absolutely. Corn in the cob, steak. Um, vegetables? Vegetables. You can chew like you have, like an everyday person. You can chew as if you had regular natural teeth. Okay. Yes, you have very, very strong structure in there that allows you to be able to chew pretty much anything you want. And for people just tuning in, we're talking about replacing missing teeth yeah. with dental implants. Yep. Are there a lot of people wearing dentures? Because I know that you have, it seems like, two types of people, and mm -hmm. we'll get to that, which are people that go to you because they want to avoid false teeth. Yes. They're headed in that direction. Yeah. And then you have the, the denture wearers. 
So the people that are already wearing dentures, are there a lot like with either an upper or lower denture? People over 60, 50% of them are in a denture or a partial denture. So they're a missing teeth or some missing teeth. Missing all their teeth or some missing teeth. So there's a lot of people out there that are wearing a denture. There's a lot of people out there that are wearing a partial denture where they have their front teeth and they're missing their back teeth. If you're wearing a denture, yeah. why aren't they all coming in to do it? To get something that snaps in, snaps out, or a fixed set of teeth supported by dental implants? With people who are actually in dentures, a lot of those patients that are wearing dentures aren't going to the dentist. So they're not really aware of a lot of the options. So patients um, may be going um, to uh, their, their denturist to have a reline, but many of them aren't going to the dentist, so they're not really aware of their, of options. their options. Yeah, so there's a lot of people out there that are not really aware of their options. Um, and a lot of people don't understand that uh, this treatment isn't something that, uh, a lot of people have fear about this treatment too, so they're not coming in. What are their fears? Well, their fears that it's gonna be, um, it's gonna hurt, that's, all, that's one. Everybody's scared about uh, going to, most people are scared to go to the dentist, right? Yeah. There's a fear of it costing a lot of money. There's a fear of, of just a change because they have something in there and they think that uh, this is a big scary step for them to go to the next phase. They don't really understand the process. So uh, this fear of the unknown is, is one of the reasons. So a lot of these patients aren't really aware of, of their options, so they're scared. Who are the typical patients that are coming in uh, and replacing missing teeth with dental implants? Well, I have, I have actually probably two groups of patients. Those are the denture wearers that have been in dentures for a long time, and those patients are unhappy with their denture and they want to go into something fixed, like I explained to you. Okay. So they either go into a fixed denture or they go into the, um, the fixed bridge or into the remover, de the snap-in, snap-out denture. Then there's another group of people that I, I see a lot of where they have actually, have, they've lost quite a few teeth. They're wearing a partial denture. They maybe have their six front teeth or their, their lower front teeth, but they're missing in the back. And um, so they're a little, they're, they're not happy with the way, th not everybody, but a lot of these people come to me and say, I'm not happy with the way my teeth look. And Is might, that common, by the way, where you have your front, upper and lower, and you're just yes. missing teeth in the back? Yeah. Because those are your chewing teeth, right? Those are your chewing teeth. And a lot of times... So those, what do they do? Well, a lot of those patients are wearing a partial denture. All right. But the same problem with a denture, is a partial denture as a denture, is that over time, that bone in the back gets pounded by that partial denture, and you will lose bone over time. Okay. So these patients um, have areas in the back where there is, there's no teeth, and what's happening is, is there's nothing in the back, and so now they're starting to bite on their front teeth more, their teeth are starting to, to move, or these, a lot of these people don't go to the dentist because they're scared and they just have lots of decay and they're not happy about the way their teeth look. Or they may have gum disease and they're losing their so teeth. So you get the complex smooth. mouths, yes. complex cases. Like their mouths are really breaking down or I think teeth are falling out, they're loose, mm -hmm. bleeding gums. Yes. I mean, that's your typical kind of a thing a you deal very, with. Very, very typical. Patients come to see me and they, I always talk to them in the beginning and say, well, tell me what it is that you, how can I help you? Uh, what would you like to have done? So I ask them what, they're, what they want to have done. Do they want to have a nice smile? Do they want to chew better? What is their expectations? And from that point, I can look at what their expectations are, look at the exam, and at that point, we can decide the best option for them. That might mean if their teeth are badly broken down then, and we cannot restore them, then we would maybe have to think about taking the teeth out and going with a fixed bridge. If their teeth are still in good shape and we can fix them, then maybe we can talk to them about putting implants in the back. And so they have teeth and implants for single implants. If they have gum disease, um, if they have gum disease, then usually what we try to do is to, uh, gum disease is infection in the gum okay. and around the teeth. So we need to take those teeth out where the infection is. But at the same time, we have to take care of the infected tissue. So in those patients, we like to remove the, the, uh, the teeth and place you in a try to take care of the, the gum disease. And when everything is healthy, then we move into a fixed bridge. So there's several different options for patients. 
to choose from. But we really need to find out what it is they are looking for. Sometimes people come to us and they have badly broken down teeth, and so we need to remove their teeth, but their bones and gums may still be good. And when that happens, we'll put them into a fixed um, bridge where it's teeth only. A lot of times... So implants and then crowns just, on top of those just implants? Just crowns on top of that. Okay. Yeah, and we don't place an implant... To fill in the holes. Well, what it does is it, it gives us the support, the root replacement, for the, for, for the, the, the bridge. So we might place six implants in to replace all the teeth on the upper. So we're placing these implants in special places and we're giving them a temporary fixed set of teeth, but they still have great bone, good gums. So we like to keep that. Okay. Now, if they come to us and we see that they've actually lost their teeth or their teeth have decayed and they've lost bone, and now they're missing teeth and some bone and gum, then we have to replace that. We have to replace the teeth and we have to replace the, the bone and the gum with zirconia or acrylic and titanium. So we can give them that beautiful smile because if they smile, we don't want to have really super long teeth. We want to give them a beautiful smile with beautiful gums and that's all part of the process. So we have to look at each individual. Like how many case. implants typically on the upper? Um, probably four to six. Four to six implants yep. on the top and then you yep. just lock like an arch of teeth like a denture, yes. like an overdenture that pops on there? It's not an overdenture because it's not a denture. Okay. An overdenture is something that locks into snaps. In. Like a snap in, snap, snap in, out. Snap okay, out. Okay. Great. It's really a bridge. And so the yeah. upper, when you're doing fixed, yes, like four or six implants, and then you create like yes. a zirconia. They look like teeth. Yes, they look like teeth. And so we can have and the gums are. You can have your implants, your six implants. You have your zirconia bridge, or you have your zirconia fixed bridge that has gums attached to it all. Whatever the patient's needs are. Do they look good? They look beautiful. Their zirconia is amazing material, and the porcelains we use now, we have beautiful porcelains. We have pink porcelain that is, uh, the, the, the technicians we have are artists. They create very beautiful, very natural looking. So you say that for many of these patients, it's a huge life transformation when it's all done. Elaborate on that. Well, Randy, for those denture wearers that are unhappy with their denture and they can't eat and chew, this is a life-transforming procedure. They're going from a denture to a beautiful set of... A, they're going from a denture to beautiful teeth with a beautiful smile. So it is life-changing. It's a big deal for these patients, Randy, because a lot of times they've come, they, they, they've, had, they've had no teeth, maybe one or two teeth sticking out. They haven't been able to eat. They've been living off of... Uh, mashed potatoes and liquid diet. So now they have teeth in there that they can actually chew with. They can smile. They can feel good about themselves. Their teeth aren't going to fall out. They're not going to be sticking goop in there. They can eat toast. So a lot of patients like this uh, have teeth that were not functioning and now they've got these beautiful teeth that they can chew and eat and have an everyday normal life So take with. me through the process of two different types of patients when they go to your office. Those people that their teeth are in bad, bad condition. They don't know if they have to lose their teeth. They don't know their options. And then also what it's like when a denture wearer goes in there. What are their options? We'll start with the first one. Okay. So patients that, um, first of all, we, we talk to the patient, we do the exam, find out what it is they don't like about their existing teeth, if they have pain or if they're decayed or if they have disease or they just not be able to chew. And then we go into, uh, we do the diagnosis. We take some models, we take some pictures, we look at their smile, uh, even though it's, sometimes it's very difficult to smile when you don't like the way you, your teeth look. So we take their smile, and then we go into the radiographic exam. And during that radiographic exam... So you have imaging right there in yes, your center? Yes, yeah, okay. I have tomographic imaging. We take a pan x-ray, and we take a, a tomographic x-ray, which is a CAT scan, which is a, sorry, three-dimensional scan. So we look at the... The, the, the area that we're working on three-dimensionally. So we can look at the width, the height, we can look at all those anatomical structures so the patient okay. gets to see exactly you know, where, how much bone they have, where the sinuses are, and where everything is. And then we go into the third phase, which is surgery. In my clinic, I do have all those threes, but the uh, general dentists um, can refer out to a surgeon, to a diagnostic place where they can do imaging, as long as all these things are done to have a proper treatment planning so the end result 
is successful. I think that's the, the important thing here is proper treatment planning so the patient understands what, what they're going through, what the final result will be where they get a beautiful set of teeth with a beautiful smile um, that looks natural. They can chew whatever they want to chew. They feel good. It's not going to fall out. It's bolted in. It's easy to clean. Um, it's going to give them the proper lip support that you don't get with a denture, because without a denture, you don't have lip support. So this okay. is going to give you the proper lip support, which is going to give you that beautiful smile. You're able to clean under there. Um, your speech is going to be good. You're not going to have a bunch of uh, acrylic on the roof of your mouth so that your S's and maybe your F's and sounds are a little bit shishy. You're going to have good phonetics. And um, all these things put together um, give you a very successful, uh, functioning, beautiful set of teeth. Okay. And patients are very, very happy about this. This does change their lives. So there's lots of benefits, obviously, to yeah. having your teeth. What are the risks with the surgery? Well, uh, Randy, there's always risks. The risk of um, the implant not integrating, which means the body rejects the implant. And that can happen in about 3 to 5% of the population. That's why it's really important that we make sure that your diabetes is under control if you're diabetic, if you're a smoker. Make sure that you're healthy, as healthy as you can be, and we go through a a, a good medical history that you can that the chances of that non-integration doesn't happen. Also, um, there's you know there's always there could be swelling, there could be infection, and we make sure that we you know give good proper post-surgical uh, instructions to to reduce swelling. And so with with patients, a lot of times what we would do is we would go over those risks and give them their options. If they're going to have a single implant and we discuss the risk and they would prefer to go with fixing their teeth, then we go that route. It's really up to the patient and to look at their, uh, their, their medical history and their comfort level with what they're going to go through. Randy, that's why we have the consultation, because with any surgical procedure, with any dental procedure, there's always risks and we need to go over the risks involved, the, 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 the pros and cons of each treatment option that that patient has. So we spend a lot of time during that consultation patient, uh, time so the patient really understands All right. what their treatment is and when they're ready to go forward with that treatment, we go forward with that treatment. And my goal is to have those patients for a long time. It's not just the six month, one year. I want to have those patients in my practice for a long time so they can maintain that beautiful smile, that functioning set of teeth, so they can have a healthier um, life when it comes to their, their teeth. We are out of time, but uh, do you think the future of dentistry is that if you're missing teeth, whether it's 50 years or 100 years from now, and this is just a prediction, yeah. and especially for denture wearers, do you think the way we know dentures today, they'll, the future may hold where they're all attached to something, like dental implants in the mouth? What are your thoughts? Oh, I think that's probably the way it's going to go, Randy. I think there's there's probably not going to be dentures. There's going to be implants right off the bat. I think that the option to have all your teeth out are, are, is not going to be there anymore. Dental implants are in dental schools. Dentists are every, dentists are placed and they learn about dental implants in school. So the, 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 the scenario of losing all your teeth isn't going to happen in the future because people are going to replace their missing teeth with implants, single implants. Okay. They might, if they lose multiple teeth from trauma or whatever the reason, they will get implants. And if the case is that their teeth have been um, broken down and they haven't gone to the dentist a lot, then I believe that dental implants will be the choice that people are going to take. It's going to be an option in, in, in most dental offices. So I think that is the way of the future. Okay. It's going to be implant supported. So if you are wearing a loose-fitting denture, and I don't mm -hmm. want to put words in your mouth, if you're wearing a loose-fitting denture mm -hmm. and you don't like it, go in, see you, I think you said four or six implants possibly, to, to get a, a full arch of teeth that snap in, snap out, mm -hmm. or they lock in, and they don't come in and out. Uh, and if your teeth are about to all fall out, right, yep. they're also candidates for dental implants mm -hmm. to get the same kind of procedure done. Is that right? I think that's right, Andy. I think that it's important that if people are unhappy with their, the way their denture is fitting, they want to have something, they want to move into a fixed set, set of teeth, then they need to talk to their dentist or come to see me at my clinic, um, or if patients are unhappy with the way their teeth look, or they feel pain, or they just they, they, they want to move into uh, a new set of teeth, 
same thing. Talk to your dentist, talk to your okay. surgeon, talk to your periodontist, or come see me and we'll give you your options as to how you can move forward into a beautiful set of teeth. Now, insurance here in the United States doesn't cover it. I don't believe your insurance covers dental implants, the whole procedure. Is that correct? Well, some insurance do cover. They cover part of the procedure. They'll cover, some insurances now are covering dental implants, which is great. A lot of insurances cover the crown, so they're, they're covering or, or uh, a denture or a, a set of teeth. So part of it will be covered. The, and with time, we're finding that more and more insurance is covering dental implants. So, so that, they, that, they could call you, come in, get an evaluation to submit to their insurance. Yep. Or get an idea of what's covered, what's not covered. Yeah, absolutely. During the consultation phase, we, we talk about the options. We help patients maximize their insurance benefit so they can get the maximum amount from their insurance so that they're um, covered as best as they can. We go through all that prior to starting any treatment. Now, here in the U.S., this mm -hmm. is almost the gold standard. Denture wearers are going to dentists every single day. I have friends that are dentists. We have dentists yeah. around the show. And they say, no more dentures. They get two implants, four implants, six implants. Get the teeth locked in there. Mm -hmm. Snap in, snap out. So is that your goal there, where you are, is to give people more options? I think my goal is to help people have healthier um, mouths so they can have a better lifestyle, so they can chew, they can feel good about themselves, whether they have teeth or they're either in a denture or they in a partial denture, moving them from something that's not um, working, for them. working for them and getting them into something that feels good. They're not going to have pain. They're not going to have fear. They're going to get into some way, some way into some form of, of, of some teeth that they're going to feel good about and they can eat and they can chew and they can be happy with their, the, the way they're functioning and okay. feel. Okay, good. Final message. Somebody watching this. Again, maybe they're afraid of dental implants. Uh, their teeth are failing or they're wearing a loose fitting denture. What's your message to them? I think give us a call, see what we can, how we can help them out, give them your options to uh, help them um, improve their chewing and eating and okay. just, yeah, make Good. it better for them. Thank you for coming back on the program. Thank you for having me, Randy. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.